Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update, Tuesday, August 23rd, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. There's that pesky hurricane on the models about eight days out, but the big story, Dallas area hit with once-in-a-thousand-year flood. Keep calm. It's boom time. Once-in-a-thousand-year flood. We, um... I believe we said that would be happening more often. We have just often. learned it has now turned deadly. The rescue is underway all day today and tonight. More than 17 million Americans are on alert for flooding into the night with the system now on the move. In Dallas-Fort Worth, more than nine inches in 24 hours, the highest total in 90 years. And outside Dallas, one area reporting 15 inches of rain. The high water rescues to get to families and drivers stranded all day today. The rain falling so heavily and so quickly. Drivers caught by surprise near downtown Dallas. These images from Interstate 30. Dramatic rescues from flooded underpasses. Firefighters plunging into neck high waters, uh, pulling drivers from their submerged vehicles. Elsewhere, the rushing water carrying cars away and simply dumping them. Cars piled up, a truck teetering off the wall. Neighborhood streets turn to rivers, flooding homes, rescue teams helping families make the dangerous journey out. Tonight, this flood threat is now pushing east. Multiple states facing flood watches. You heard it, pushing east. And we'll report on that and give you all the warnings as we progress. Wet microbursts behind damage to the southern Utah town. Tornadoes form near the Utah border. And we had some amazing weather happen over the last 24 hours. Here you can see that the National Weather Service says it was a wet microburst from a thunderstorm that's to blame for tearing the roof off a home and other damage reported in a southern Utah town Sunday afternoon. Not a tornado, so interesting thing. Here's a tornado, though. A rare torna tornado strikes desert southwest and touches down in Arizona and Nevada. Most of the desert southwest receives an average of less than 10 inches of precipitation per year, but when it does rain... It does rain. Parts of Arizona, Nevada, and Utah got a little bit more than they bargained for Sunday when the afternoon, the day, saw monsoon rain with several tornadoes touching down. And you could see one of them right there. That's pretty fantastic and pretty rare. Now, after flooding rainfall for over a week in the southwest, a break is on the way. And you could see here the forecast just for some spotty storms Tuesday. But it, uh, overall forecast looks pretty wet, and we'll get to that in a moment. Severity of flash flooding in Dallas area surprises residents as rescue crews respond to hundreds of calls for help. And we showed you early uh, some of the footage from Dallas. This is a woman's apartment she just moved into. I just woke up, and I don't, should I call 911? What do I do? So this was my brand new apartment. Holy shit, okay. I just moved in two days ago the last thing i expected was to wake up to my brand new apartment flooded my front door there was just water gushing through the front door of the apartment my refrigerator started floating away oh good you guys look MacBooks can float. All my stuff was still packed in boxes. By then, like the cardboard started like falling apart, and all my stuff just like started like toppling and in, into the water, which is a bummer. This is pretty sad. Even her car floated away. I'm looking for my car. I think it was washed away in the flood. So just a lot of tragic things happening down in the Dallas area with people's apartments and their cars being washed away. Now, even an Uber driver died while she called her husband for help from a tax, a te the Texas flash flooding. Very sad story. As flood warnings were issued for Chavez and e Eddy counties due to record-breaking floods. This was near Rui Doso here. And you might be um, able to get... No, we're not going to watch that. I just want to show you some of these graphs at the Pecos River coming up from about 4 feet to over 17 feet in just 24 hours. You can see the Pecos River at Lake Arthur here still about 4 feet above the normal stage there. And that came up 7 feet from 4 to 11. 
And the discharge here, zero CFS going all the way up to 1600. There is a, an amazing video of the yes. river rising. Where is it? I swear I watched what? it. Maybe it's here. No, that's the rescue. That's good enough. All right, cool. Here's the video of the Picos River. And look at how rapidly that, <laughs> that comes up there. So it's nice and calm. And then wait for it. Right in there. Boom. Look at that. Look at the width of it. So pretty amazing amount. That's what happens when you get 10 inches of rain in 24 hours. The Pecos River comes way up. Just some pretty cool footage there from the USGS and one of their monitoring stations. Now, Maine also got drenched. How much rain did they get? Well, old records were broken. Some areas it looks get, look like they got 10 or more inches here. Heavy rain fell for several hours across southern Maine Monday, setting records in Portland, 2.19 inches of rain fell, smashing the old record for rainfall on August 22nd. The previous was just 1.85 inches back in 1885. Holy macaroni. And that little bullseye area, whew, just west of Portland, well, that must have been some flash flooding in there. I couldn't find any uh, accounts or footage of it, though. Now, the quartz fire continues to grow. It's now at 1,678 acres in Glacier National Park. And it's the only thing melting the glaciers right now. Imagine that. Widespread heavy rain event in the southern U.S. Like a broken record. The widespread heavy rain and flood event across the southern U.S. will continue on Tuesday and possibly Wednesday as it advances slowly into the lower Mississippi Valley and south. On Tuesday, a moderate risk of excessive rain and flooding, level three out of four, will be in effect from northern Louisiana to western central Mississippi. And uh, central and northern Florida are not out of the woods. I'm going to show you the precipitation model here and take a look at how much rain is forecast just uh, through the 28th. So just through Sunday, up to six inches of rain there in central Florida, as well as six inches of rain, potentially five to six inches of rain in southern Arkansas, western Mississippi, and all over Louisiana. As you can see, that track of that potential hurricane moving up there that's on the models right there, boom. It's going to come into the picture right at August, end of August, into the 1st of September. So we'll keep a close eye on the model to see if this baby is still there. It's been changing, so these things change and we need to get closer and closer to that event, which would be this weekend, we will know much, much more. So stay tuned to the channel for updates on the tropical, because right now these two disturbances have 0% in the next 48 hours. So nothing pressing or dangerous, except maybe here in South Carolina where the USGS issues an earthquake advisory for Midland, South Carolina. This is amazing. Uh, all it is is a prediction for what's to come. They're in the middle of an earthquake swarm. And according to the USGS in this region, there's a 95% chance that quakes will continue, but nothing larger than four magnitude. And the other scenario is there's a 5% chance that there will be a large 4.5 magnitude or greater followed by aftershock. So... Those are the two scenarios you got over there. And we just did have a very strong magnitude 6.5 in the Indian Ocean, which was downgraded several times. And now the USGS is just showing six magnitude. But overall, all is quiet worldwide, except at Kilauea, where yesterday there was a four magnitude. And there were no changes in the eruptive behavior of Kilauea. Um, and this earthquake was offshore here between the seamount and Kilauea itself. So interesting. Near Pahala, I guess. Here we are over at the Reykjanes Ridge where seismicity is still low and activity at the volcano has all but ceased. The micro tremor has been rising steadily for the past, looks like about 12 hours. So it may be coming back to life, but right now nothing is happening in that lava field there. Space weather news, same there. We did have a sunspot uh, yesterday rapidly develop in the center of the disk, air, uh, active region 3085, but that has since quieted down from shooting out some 
minor C flares with almost no coronal mass ejections and the eruptive level now down to B2. So very quiet sun, little coronal hole turning around the limb. And there could be an active region that's turning around the limb to bring us some more eruptive behavior, but the sun is extremely quiet. Now, Go's electron flux is showing a little electron event for the past 24 hours, so that um, is happening. And Artemis 1 will carry space weather CubeSat to study the solar wind. Consider it a mobile weather station in space. This is good news. We'll have more information coming from the solar wind. NASA's upcoming Artemis 1 mission may be focused on the moon, but at least one of its payloads will turn its focus instead to the sun. Hitching a ride on NASA's Artemis 1 is a CubeSat weather station destined to orbit the sun in interplanetary space. The CubeSat to study solar particles, or CUSP, is a 6-unit, six 6U six CubeSat designed by the Southwest Research Institute, or SWRI, in San Antonio that will study the onslaught of solar radiation headed for Earth, otherwise known as the solar wind. Hmm, sign of the times. Now, a bounty has been issued for cattle thieves in northern South Dakota. As prices rise, steaks can be up to $20 a pound in some supermarkets. Well, these things, history repeats itself. And once again, cattle is being stolen because people are starving. And this is just the beginning of what should progress at least for another half a year or more. No more blizzard warnings in Hawaii. Yes, it doesn't fit the narrative. So there will be no more blizzard warnings um, in Hawaii. Instead of blizzard warnings, they will use winter storm warnings with high wind warnings, which, by the way, is the definition of a blizzard. Shut up, Al! Now, inside an archaeological dig at Oregon Caves, where people lived 13,000 years ago. Interesting article here where they've actually dated co human copper lights, which are poop, to 14,000 years ago uh, in and around this cave. Pretty interesting stuff there with some videos, so check out the article. All the links to everything we show you today will be below the video. Uzbekistan buys another 8.7 tons of gold in July. Another? Who knew they bought the first 8.7? So what we see here are countries around the world stockpiling precious metals because, well, many are predicting that the value of your dollar may be about to tank. And that might be on purpose. If cash tanks, they can eliminate cash and go completely 100% digital, and they'll be able to track every purchase, every single thing you do. And that, well, that is not something we all want. Now, scientists discover a five-mile-wide impact crater off the coast of Africa. And this is upending the whole idea of the extinction of the dinosaurs. We all know about the giant Chicxulub Club crater in the Yucatan Peninsula. But now, a second large crater, not as big as Chicxulub Club by any means. The Chicxulub Club crater is a 100-mile-wide crater in the Gulf of Mexico. This new crater is smaller at just five miles in diameter. And it's covered by several hundred feet of sediment. It was discovered by accident when Harriet Watt University researchers Ustine Nicholson used seismic data to study the tectonic plate division between South America and Africa. And there it was. Something looked very much like an impact crater. And that, that's another boom during the extinction of the dinosaurs. So multiple impactors there, just like there were multiple impactors during the Younger Dryas event. Now, rare prehistoric site from 5,000 BC emerges amidst the drought. This is a 7,000-year-old megalithic site. Amid Spain's worst drought in decades, a rare prehistoric site has emerged, dubbed Spanish Stonehenge, a rock formation believed to date back 5,000 BC, which is 7,000 years ago, is now fully emerged after waters in the surrounding reservoir receded. And it looks like a lot was going on here, like altars and some other things. So fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. What's not fascinating is Roundup and the destruction of our biome and our planet by these multinational corporations that have polluted the planet forever. And Bear Monsanto, they're one of the worst. And it's glyphosate or Roundup, the world's most popular weed killer, 
that has now been linked to convulsions in animals for the first time. It has also been linked to neurological problems in humans. And a great book that you can get and read is Toxic Legacy, How the Weed Killer Glyphosate is Destroying Our Health and the Environment by Dr. Stephanie Seneff. And we'll give you a little 60-page sampler linked below. And also, we'll link you to the full paper, Glyphosate Pathways to Modern Disease 2, Celiac Sprue and Gluten Intolerance. And guys, don't forget this weekend is the 33rd annual Crestone Energy Fair. They need volunteers, and we need volunteers for our tent. So if you're going to be there and you have some time to help out the Oppenheimer Ranch Project tent, please shoot us an email, and there will be something in it for you. So we need a volunteer for Saturday and Sunday at the tent. So if you're going to be at the Crestone Energy Fair, please reach out to us at oppenheimerranch at gmail.com. Um... And that would be awesome. The Crestone Energy Fair, August 27th and 28th, the longest running sustainable living fair on the planet. And it's free. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where Uzbekistan is buying up all the gold. All you have to do is subscribe to the Oppenheimer Ranch Project for peace of mind. Become a hero and share this video. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe.